Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> so you're going you're gonna to see that this is a new thing for, uh, for the two of us to do. We're going to have a little, I don't know what the right um, metaphor is, Abbott and Costello or something routine It's like up the here. Academy Awards. Like that. <laughs> I'm the straight guy, and, and Dick's going to be the person who makes fun of me. It'll work really well. Um, so I'm really happy to be here um, on the occasion of the third annual uh, Financial Stability Conference we've co-hosted with the Office of Financial Research. Uh, in our previous uh, iterations, we've had um, a conference on interdisciplinary approaches to financial stability and a conference on big data and finance that were uh, just terrific. And uh, the, um, the work that we're doing together with OFR really exemplifies the kind of work that we're doing at the Center on Finance, Law and Policy. Uh, which we set up uh, now four years ago, and really more broadly at the University of Michigan. Uh, we bring together scholars, uh, practitioners, nonprofits, government agencies in interdisciplinary work uh, trying to focus on solving really hard problems. Um, and I am I'm so thrilled uh, to welcome uh, so many distinguished uh, speakers for the next few days. And I want to just take a, a moment um, to thank uh, Dick. Many of you may know that uh, Dick um, just announced that he is going to be um, stepping down from the Office of Financial Research at the end of the year. And um, we are um, just uh, deeply, I think, um, grateful uh, for his service, for his leadership, um, for his uh, incredible resilience, um, for his creativity, um, and really for the uh, amazing work that he's done um, establishing the Office of Financial Research from scratch over a very short period of time. So uh, please join me in thanking Dick. You want to say a few words? Sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Michael, for those kind words, and thanks for your uh, appreciation. And I'm, I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to participate in uh, and co-sponsor this conference. And uh, as Michael uh, said, you know, we're very much aligned in our goals uh, and we approach things from uh, different perspectives. And that's kind of the point of this whole gathering, that having an interdisciplinary approach is something to me that is really uh, thrilling and just opens up new avenues for the ways that we want to look at solving the problems that, um, you know, we were brought here uh, to solve. So thank you. Thanks very much, Dick. Um, I want to um, also uh, just say a little bit about the format of, the, of what we're going to do over the next few days. Um, we are going to be mostly in this room, uh, so you can, um, uh, it will become familiar to you. Uh, for our keynote and panel discussions, uh, we're going to have some snacks in the hallway outside. Um, lunch is going to be in the Lawyers Club Lounge, um, which is the building next to this one, and we'll have um, students and um, others who are going to help you uh, navigate the not difficult task of going next door. Um, I want to thank um, not only Dick, but also Matt Reed, Mark Flood, and Miriam Actenberg from the Office of Financial Research. Um, uh, those of you who have worked in any organization know that there are people like Dick and me who get to stand up here and talk, and then there are the people who do all the work. Um, and at OFR, uh, it is Matt, Mark, and Miriam. Um, and for me, that is Christy Baer, uh, Jenny Ricard, Tracy Van Dusen, and Laura Lee, who have been doing all the work behind the scenes to make this conference uh, happen. Uh, Brian Genoa um, from Michigan Law's IT team is uh, making this um, live stream available around the world. Um, I want to thank also all the Center on Financial and Policies uh, research assistants, Abigail DeHart, Brian Koziara, Isabel Park, Ryan Munka, and Will Schuf in particular. I want to thank the sponsors of this conference, including Omidyar Network, uh, the law school here, and the Ford School of Public Policy. I want to thank our student groups involved in this effort, um, Michigan FinTech and Wolverine Cryptocurrency Club. I bet you didn't know we had these um, uh, entities, but we're very thankful they're here. Um, shout out in the middle. And um, I also want to thank um, uh, some generous individual donors who support the Center on Finance, Law, and Policy, including this conference over the years, um, Fred Blank, Paul Lee, John Loomis, and Bill Marcoux. 
Um, so uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm going to turn it back over to Dick for a few words, and then I'm going to introduce our keynote speaker. Okay, thanks, Michael. So like Michael, I want to also thank uh, all the sponsors. I won't go through the same list <laughs> and, and list everybody, but uh, you know, Christy and her team have been amazing, uh, and uh, our folks at OFR work so well together with them to, uh, to pull this off. Um, so thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here, and uh, we're very proud to, uh, to be here to co-sponsor this, and uh, I hope, uh, as Michael mentioned, uh, after I leave, maybe I can participate by sitting in the audience uh, and, and, join, uh, and join this. Just a word in the OFR, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, in 2010, uh, as you know, the Dodd-Frank Act uh, established the Financial Stability Oversight Council and the Office of Financial Research with complementary goals. The Council is uh, charged with assessing and monitoring threats to financial stability, developing remedies for those threats, and restoring market discipline uh, by eliminating or trying to uh, too big to fail. We at the OFR help promote financial stability by improving the scope, accessibility, and quality of financial data, by assessing and monitoring threats to financial stability from a slightly different perspective, and developing risk, uh, management, risk assessment tools to do that, by performing uh, and sponsoring financial stability research, and by evaluating policies designed to mitigate threats to financial stability. The financial system is constantly evolving, and so our work must be equally dynamic. Financial technology or fintech can be traced back, of course, to the development of the telegraph. So this is not something that is uh, new in that respect. Uh, obviously, between then and the 1980s, most fintech advancements were record keeping and data systems focused on back offices of financial institutions out of sight of the public. And much of that still is going on, and that's where a lot of the innovation is. As internet te technology became more available, however, fintech evolved uh, at an accelerating pace. Financial firms digitized their processes, and companies began introducing consumer facing products such as online banking and PayPal. And ma many people who are engaged in those initiatives are here today, so we're excited about that. Today, FinTech continues to disrupt and to evolve, not only in how financial products and services are delivered, but who delivers them and to whom. Innovators and policymakers face, face challenges in understanding uh, and balancing the benefits of FinTech, which are legion, against the potential risks. And that's why we're here today. We strongly believe that the financial, regulatory, and policy landscape requires an interdisciplinary approach. That's why we've built a diverse interdisciplinary team over the past six and a half years. And that's why we think it's so important to bring together all of you to further our understanding of financial technology and to begin to answer the fundamental questions that FinTech raises. We have an outstanding group of speakers. Uh, we're going to hear about more about them uh, a little later. I can't imagine a better group to explore and begin to answer this fundamental threshold question. How do we balance the upside potential benefits of financial technology and innovation against its downside risks? Thanks. Thank you, Dick. Um, I'm uh, especially uh, pleased to see Jillian here. Um, we were a little worried about the uh, flight paths uh, on the way in. Um, I am um, uh, delighted to be able to introduce to you Jillian Tett, uh, who serves as the US managing editor of the Financial Times. Um, she writes weekly columns for the FT covering a range of economic, financial, political, and social issues. Um, I'm sure many of you are regular readers. I certainly am. Um, uh, Ms. Ted has a long and distinguished career at the FT and is also a prolific author, uh, which is hard to pull off in the job she has. Um, she um, most recently uh, wrote a book called The Silo Effect. Um, which looks at the global economy and financial system through the lens of cultural anthropology, um, also not a usual uh, activity for your FT journalists, um, highlighting the, um, the peril of expertise um, in thinking about the global system. Uh, she's also written the New York Times bestseller, Fool's Gold, How Unrestrained Greed Corrupted a Dream, Shattered Global Markets, and Unleashed a Catastrophe. Uh, also, not titles we often have in the law school um, on papers. Um, and uh, uh, also, Saving the Sun, a Wall Street gamble to rescue Japan from its trillion dollar meltdown. Um, before joining the FT, um, it seems uh, not plausible to me, but almost 25 years ago, um, Jillian received a PhD in social anthropology from Cambridge University, 
uh, based on her field work in the former uh, Soviet Union. We are um, just thrilled and delighted to have Jillian here today to talk to us, and I'm uh, deeply honored to be able to introduce her. Please join me in thanking Jillian for being here.